leave from the left to the right with setting things up differently in this uh, porch that I'm on in sharing the word and caring and as I'm trying to figure out how to put a bookmark here. <laughs> but the fun thing I like about all this is the reality of being real is that when people put on airs, when they act a different way than what they really are, when they portray themselves as something they're not, or or can't let their hair down because they don't have any. <laughs> Pretty soon, one of these days again, I'll, I'll, if you've seen the beginning of these devotionals, you know that I've shaved my head off and I've shaved my beard off and I was practically bald and beardless to start with. So it's kind of like all growing back and my wife gets humorously laughing about how many different ways that I look through the years or through time as I change my appearance, not because of any personal reason, just I do, and it's still me, but people react differently, you know, to the way you're seen as opposed to who you are. And God knows who you are because he sees your heart and he knows who and what he's done in you. And so if people make a mistake about you, don't sweat it. You know, I I smile when I when I put on a three-piece suit, you know, and I walk out and I've done my professional thing, you know, and there's even some pictures of me in a nice suit and tie, you know, of course my face is a little thinner, and they're out there on the web, you know, and I'm like, oh, they see this, you know, and they go, oh, look at this guy. Or then there are other pictures when I was younger or even sometimes when I was older that I had long hair and had a beard, you know, and I looked like a homeless bum or possibly when I was in working with Chabad, you know, with the Jewish community at one time, that uh, I had a beard, you know, and I was not so long a hair, but, you know, it was okay, you know, and I was very Jewish appearing, you know, I looked so much like a Jew, you know, it was so good, you know, we had to have, we had to keep it, you know, we were, we were very kosher. <laughs> Phooey. Still me. Still the same. Love Jesus then, love Jesus now, and always will love Jesus, because when you know God, Nothing ever is going to replace God in your life. Nothing is ever going to take his place that he's created for himself in you and that you know him. So when you know God, nothing else fits. Nothing else matters because it's God, the living God, that you're serving. It is his son that you've given your life over to. It is his spirit that is at work in you to cause you to be made more likened unto him day by day. And so it don't matter the outside because this thing's passing away that you see. But the Word of God will endure forever. And so in looking at Spurgeon today, as God speaks to us His way, the people that do know their God shall be strong. Every believer understands that to know God is the highest and best form of knowledge. And this spiritual knowledge is a source of strength to the Christian. It strengthens his faith. Believers are constantly spoken of in scriptures as being persons who are enlightened and taught of the Lord. They are said to have a unction from the Holy One, and it is the Spirit's peculiar office to lead them into all truth, and all this for the increase and fostering of their faith. Knowledge strengthens love as well as faith. Knowledge opens the door, and then through that door we see our Savior. Or, to use another similitude, similitude, knowledge paints the portrait of Jesus, and when we see that portrait, then we love him. But we cannot love a Christ whom we do not know, at least in some degree. If we know but little of the excellencies of Jesus, what he has done for us and what he is doing now, we cannot love him much. But the more we know him personally, and the more we understand him, and he is alive in us, the more we shall love him, because we have experience of him. Knowing knowledge also strengthens hope. How can we hope for a thing if we do not know of its existence? Hope may be the telescope, but till we receive instruction, our ignorance stands in front of the glass, and we can see nothing at ever. Nothing whatsoever. We don't know how to focus. 
Knowledge removes the interposing object, the cover, and when we look through the bright optic glass, we discern the glory to be revealed and anticipate with joyous confidence the revelation thereof. Knowledge supplies our reason for patience. How shall we have patience unless we know something of the sympathy and the compassion of Jesus and understand the good which is to come out of the correction which our Heavenly Father sends us and has caused on us and in us and through us to be made conformable to His image? Nor is there one single grace of the Christian which under God will not be fostered and encouraged to grow and brought to perfection by holy knowledge. How important then is it that we should grow not only in grace, but in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ? It is of the most and utmost importance. The more you know, the more you get. The more you get, the more you know. <laughs> and the more you know, you need more. <laughs> so the closer you get, the more you know that you need more and more. And that's true. The greatest of saints finds that the more he thinks he knows, the less he really knows. And the more that he knows, he knows that he doesn't know as much as he thought he knew. So, in growing in graces and knowledge of Jesus, the fact is the reality of having a personal relationship is one of just, you get to know him better and better, and it gets easier and easier because you just let it go and love him as he is, and he loves you as you are, and he changes you because just being in his presence will change you anyways. So you can identify in some ways with that when you say you go to church and experience it in worship and that's true you're in god's presence and god's presence is there but you know the intimacy that jesus wants for you is to be able to be with him anywhere anytime any place and in all things and in all ways and in omni no <laughs> in everything so you will be able to no matter what anything comes your way give thanks for the day that the lord has made because all that is going to happen today, all that you are enveloped in and occurs around you, if you are walking with, talking with, hearing from, seeing, and experiencing Jesus in a personal and intimate way, then it's all going to accomplish His purposes. And all you need to do is ask Him what you need to do today in response to each and every circumstance that comes along your way. So make choices but ask and you shall receive seek and you shall find knock and the door will be open because god will reveal personally to you intimately with you what he wants you to do in everything we're told to trust him with everything we're told to ask him for wisdom when we lack it we're told him to re literally make him our absolute necessity that in him we live and move and have our being and without him not a breath should be taken without the knowledge of his presence being living in us through us to accomplish his will so that we could be a part of the oneness of god that god would be one in us and we would be one with god complicated <laughs> in that case talk to jesus it's so simple no problem